why we need quality of service in the network or what is the requirement of quality of service in the network so earlier what we used to happen like uh, we used to have like uh, dedicated traffic for de dedicated link for different different type of traffic uh, such as for example we used to have from this router to this router we used to have a dedicated link for our data traffic we used to have a dedicated link for our voice traffic and we used to have a dedicated link for our video traffic so earlier like we used to have dedicated links for different different types of traffic such as data voice or video uh, we can have like 10 mbps 100 mbps link for the data 10 mbps 100 mbps link for the voice 10 mbps or 100 mbps link for video so since we had the dedicated link uh, there was like no problem like uh, people making voice calls people making video call they were able to like make the audio or video call voice or video call without any problem a data traffic was completely isolated from the voice traffic and the video traffic so data traffic uh, used to pass from a dedicated link voice and video traffic used to pass from some other link so since there were like multiple links involved like there was no problem in communication like voice traffic can be sent from one device to the device video traffic can be sent from one device to the device data traffic can be sent from one device to the other device but nowadays we do not use we use nowadays uh, what is uh, we call a converged network in a converged network what do we mean by converged network that instead of having like three four like multiple links we are going to have one high speed link let's say for example 100 mbps or one gig we are going to have like a high speed link such as for example 100 mbps or one gig and we are going to transfer like all the traffic from the same link like same like data traffic will go from this link the voice traffic will go from the same link and the video traffic will go from the same link so nowadays we don't have like dedicated links for different different types of traffic we have nowadays uh, same link for like all the type of traffic data voice and video uh, which is what we refer to as nowadays a converged network converged network is a network where all the traffic such as voice video and data is being sent over the same link rather than being sent via multiple links since we have gone for this converged link concept uh, a problem has arisen. like uh, since we are using the same link to transfer our data voice and video and maybe some other like business critical application traffic or some other yeah any any any, any other critical application traffic since all the traffic is 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 going from the same link uh, the chances are there uh, that these voice and video traffic this voice traffic video traffic which is what we can re define as the real time traffic or maybe your business critical application traffic that we have it might it might face some latency it might face some loss it might face some delay certain challenges might arise like when we are sending like all the traffic from the same link because these voice traffic video traffic bus critical business application traffic all the traffic is being sent alongside the typical data traffic so maybe someone is uploading a file on the ftp server or someone is downloading the file from the ftp tftp server they are uploading like let's say for example tens of gb of files or up downloading like tens of gb of file and on the same link the normal data is being transferred and on the same link someone is making the voice call video call someone is accessing the business critical application so a uh, congestion might occur delay you might face for these voice and video calls so variety of challenges might arise because of this converged network uh, we can always go for more bandwidth like if you think that congestion has occurred if you think that you are facing some challenges in voice video business critical application you can always go for more bandwidth but, pur but purchasing like more bandwidth is not going to be enough because uh, if you purchase like for example more bandwidth these applications such as ftp tftp might consume more bandwidth as compared to like the business critical applications or video or voice traffic so purchasing more bandwidth is not going to be a very good solution so somehow what we need to do in this converse network somehow we need to uh, prioritize somehow we need to like prioritize our voice traffic video traffic business critical application traffic over a normal data traffic so what i want like when a device receives a voice traffic a device receives a video traffic or a device receives a traffic for any business critical application that traffic must be prioritized over a normal data traffic basically what we are going to do we are uh, we have different different types of traffic and we are going to purposefully we are going to purposefully differentiate we are purposefully going to discriminate actually we are purposefully going to discriminate in these different different types of traffic we are going to prefer we are going to prioritize our voice video traffic or business critical application traffic over a normal data traffic this prioritization 
is what we refer to as this quality of service. Quality of service is basically a set of tools. Quality of service is not a protocol. Quality of service is a set of tools. Uh, some commands, if I say. Quality of service is a set of tools or some commands that we can use to improve the user experience. Uh, user experience can be improved with the help of this quality of service. So we can use some tools uh, as a part of our quality of service to improve the user experience for those a business critical application, for those voice traffic, for those video traffic, the user experience can be made better with the help of these set of tools. So quality of service is a way, is a method of improving the network performance so that the users get better user experience for those business critical applications, voice traffic, video traffic, or any other type of uh, maybe critical application. So quality of service, first of all, is not a command. Quality of service uses a few tools, tools by tools, what I mean, like some commands, some set of commands, uh, implementing uh, which like uh, is going to improve the user experience for like those business critical applications, voice or video traffic. Quality of service is more like the ability. Quality of service, quality of service is not a protocol. It is a set of practices and tools that affect the network performance based on how we have configured it. So quality of service is in, not a protocol. It is a set of practices and tools, basically commands that we can actually uh, implement that we can configure on our routers which is uh, so that the user experience can be better so that the network performance can improve for those business critical application maybe for those uh, voice video applications so that the user do not face like a lot of challenges in making voice over call video or ip calls or maybe like accessing the business critical application so by definition what is quality of service the ability of the network quality of service is the ability of the network to improve to provide sorry to provide better or special service to a set of users or application as compared to the other set of users and application so quality of service is the ability of the network to provide better or a special treatment a special service to a set of users or application to determine like in comparison to the other users and application some users and applications are going to get better treatment as compared to the other users and application so some other users or applications are going to be, for example, like business critical applications, such as, for example, our finance department users, such as, for example, our VOIP calls, such as voice over IP, video over IP calls, all those things like are going to get better treatment uh, with the help of this quality of service. So for the data traffic also, like it's not like we cannot enable the data traffic, uh, quality of service for the data traffic. We can also enable the quality of service for data traffic because in our company, we might have like some normal data and we might have some business critical application traffic as well. So if some business critical application such as, for example, some finance application is running in your company and you want to prioritize that finance application traffic over any other type of traffic, then also you are going to implement the quality of service. It's not like only for voice and video, we are going to enable the quality of service. We can enable the quality of service for uh, data traffic as well. Uh, especially like in the cases when we have some business critical application such as financial applications some crm applications some some typical business critical applications that have a uh, very importance in your organization for those traffic we can also enable this quality of service so what we are going to do after enabling the quality of service or by enabling the quality of service we are going to provide a special or better treatment to certain users and application as compared to the other user and application we are going to define what users and applications are going to have better treatment as compared to the other users and applications. And these are the four things that we are going to improve. Bandwidth, delay, jitter, and packet loss. To improve the user experience, what we are going to do actually, we are going to uh, play with these four characteristics of the traffic. Bandwidth, we might, we might reserve a certain amount of bandwidth for certain application. Uh, delay, we are going to fine tune the delay settings for a certain application. Jitter, we might fine tune the jitter settings for the application and we might want to control how or uh, like uh, when the packet loss happens, how it is going to be treated. So bandwidth, delay, jitter and packet loss are the four characteristics that your quality of service can have impact on. Your quality of service can affect four characteristics of the traffic. Quality of service tools can control, can affect the bandwidth in the network, delay in the network, jitter in the network and packet loss in the. What is the bandwidth? Bandwidth is number of bits that can be sent over the link per second. How much amount of data can be sent over the link per second? That is what we define as the bandwidth. 
so we might want to reserve certain amount of bandwidth for certain application we can reserve certain amount of bandwidth for certain type of traffic or certain type of application so bandwidth defines like how many number of bits can be sent over the link on per second basis so in one second if we are allowed to send like 8000 bits per second traffic then the bandwidth is going to be like 8000 bits per second if i can send like more than that whatever whatever amount of traffic you can send over the link on per second basis that is what we are going to refer to as the bandwidth delay one way delay like i have said delay uh, remember that uh, delay is of like total eight nine eight seven eight types of delays are there total when we talk about delay there are total like i think seven eight or nine types of like delays that we can actually have in our network delay typically means like in in, in this case in this context delay basically means like one way delay or the round trip delay so if i send the packet from here to here how much time it is going to take to reach that packet to the destination or maybe the round trip like when i send the packet I, the packet was sent and the reply was received so how long did it take uh, to complete this round trip journey for the packet so that is what we are going to refer to as the round trip delay so one way delay basically means when i send the traffic how much delay is going to be experienced round trip delay basically means i send the traffic i got the reply then how much total delay is going to be experienced right so delay either one way delay or the round trip delay jitter like if i send n number of consecutive packets and all the packets are facing like different different delay so what is the variation in those delay variation in delay variation in delay basically means i am sending the packet and all these packets are actually facing different different delays so some packet is being sent like with the delay value of 5 millisecond uh, some packets are facing up 10 milliseconds 7 milliseconds 8 milliseconds so variation in delay is what we refer to as the uh, jitter jitter basically means variation in one way delay so if i send n number of consecutive packets if i send a total n number of packets those n number of packets are experiencing different different delay settings so the variation in this delay is what we refer to as the jitter jitter means variation in one way delay between the consecutive packets so if you send like n number of packets n number of consecutive packets what is the variation of the delay in those n number of consecutive packets that is what we are going to refer to as the jitter and packet loss again how many number of packets got dropped in the transit so percentage of the packet dropped in the transit is what we refer to as the packet loss so these are the four characteristics actually these are the four characteristics that uh, our quality of service is going to impact quality of service can impact bandwidth delay with the help of the quality of service we can affect bandwidth delay jitter and packet loss characteristic however remember if you improve one characteristic like if you let's say for example for a certain application you have reserved some amount of bandwidth you might notice that other applications might face more delay because for them now the band amount of bandwidth that is left is comparatively lower so they might experience more delay so remember that improving one characteristic remember that improving one characteristic might degrade the another characteristic like for example if you let's say for example this there were two applications running application one application two and for application one i have reserved out of the 10 mbps i have reserved like 7 mbps bandwidth if i have reserved certain amount of bandwidth for a certain application the delay is going to be improved for that particular application earlier the packets were taking like more time to be sent and received but now since we have reserved more amount of bandwidth the delay overall delay is going to be reduced as well so if you if you improve one characteristic it might degrade the other characteristic as well so for this application delay has decreased but for the other application because now we are left with lower bandwidth low bandwidth the delay might increase as well so improving one characteristic might degrade the other characteristic so if you if you have if you have let's say for example added if you have reserved more amount of bandwidth for a certain application its delay is going to be reduced but there are chances that certain other applications might face more delay because they are now left with the low bandwidth settings they might also experience the packet loss they might experience like more jitter so improving one characteristic might degrade the other characteristic so if you don't use quality of service which let's say for example by default we don't use so if you do not use quality of service then there will be certain problem for your voice traffic video traffic and the data traffic if you do not use quality of service in your network and we are having like one link 
from that link our voice video and data all the traffic is being sent so your voice traffic might be hard to understand it might break up it might sound choppy there will be delays making interacting difficult callers do not know when the other party has finished talking calls are getting disconnected frequently so if you have not used any quality of service for your voice traffic these are some general challenges that you might actually face similar to that if you do not use quality of service for your video traffic your pictures might not display properly movements might not be proper as well audio might not sync with video movements are basically slowing down so your video traffic is, is going to experience a lot of challenges if you have not configured quality of service for your video traffic in fact your data traffic normally if for the data traffic if let's say there was some business critical application and for that business critical application let's say we have not configured any quality of service so there are chances that the data might arrive after it is no longer useful so let's say for example uh, we are using some sort of uh, uh, some sort of security appliance in our organization and that security appliance is responsible to send uh, uh, otp for those business critical applications so there are chances that the otp that was sent from that uh, security appliance might arrive when it is no longer useful so even for your business even for your data traffic if you have not implemented the quality of service your data might arrive when it is no longer useful maybe maybe some email has been sent let's say for example somewhere a link has gone down and you have configured things such as for example snmp to send you alerts to send you emails and uh, since we had like a lot of traffic the email is arriving like three four five hours later so even in that case that is not going to be any useful so data might arrive after it is no longer useful so let's say for example you have called a customer care agent and that customer care agent is waiting for the screen to display uh, un until the screen get a screen gets displayed like the customer care agent might not be able to give you any resolution for the problem so if, if, if let's say for example uh, we are having like a, a same link to send our data traffic voice traffic or the video traffic even for the normal data traffic you might experience these mm -hmm. challenges erratic responses time might frustrate the user who may give up or try again later after some time so for all the type of traffic like for all the type of traffic for the voice traffic for the video traffic or even for the data traffic if we have not configured the quality of service these are some challenges these are certain challenges that you might actually face so for voice and video it makes sense to implement the quality of service but for the data traffic also it makes sense to implement the quality of service at least for your business critical application traffic at least for your important data traffic you must implement the quality of service and this is a recommendation this is this is the recommendation for your voice traffic video traffic here so for interactive voice video interactive voice traffic at least like uh, the delay in your network must be 150 milliseconds or less jitter must be 30 milliseconds or less and packet loss must be one percent or less for interacting voice and video if you have more than that much amount of delay if you have more than that much amount of jitter if you have more than that much amount of packet loss your network is not considered proper for interactive voice traffic so if, in order to have an interactive like a voip call voice over ip call your network must not have more than this much amount of delay jitter and packet it is it is the recommended settings these are the recommended uh, loss latency and jitter settings a uh, loss uh, sorry loss delay and jitter so huh, loss latency and jitter loss delay and jitter these are the loss uh, delay and jitter settings for interactive voice traffic so if you want to have like uh, voip call your network must not have more than more than 150 milliseconds of delay 30 milliseconds of jitter and one percent more than one percent of the packet loss if you have more than that much amount of delay loss and jitter then you must consider implementing some quality of service to improve the network performance so that the users can make proper voip voice over ip calls and same goes for the video traffic as well this is for the video traffic uh, question for this uh, actually uh, the link between the two destinations huh. and uh, there is a traffic flow uh, the only voice flow are there in between the links mm. uh, in, in that link but i need to prefer that the director voice or director uh, communication is a uh, higher priority then can say that like that uh, um, if we have the tools like if the tool allows you to match on best criteria then yes you can 
whatever tool you are going to use to implement the quality of service if that tool supports matching of that thing that you have asked then definitely you can if the tool does not recognize that thing that you have asked then you will not be able to implement it like uh, we can implement the quality of service for different different type of protocols traffic but for that your quality of service tool must recognize that protocol or that certain application so if your voice over ip uh, or video or ip traffic you want to prefer then we can just match on protocol such as RTP. But uh, if you want to discriminate like or prefer within the voice traffic, within the video traffic, a certain uh, type of traffic, then you have to check for the matching criteria that you get in the quality of service tool, such as class map, policy map. If, if you have the option to match on that criteria, then yes, you can. If you don't have the option to match on that criteria, then you can. So you need to ex explore like uh, do we get the options to match on that certain criteria that we have asked if we have that criteria then definitely we'll be able to implement the quality of service for the same so for the voice traffic this is the recommendation and for the video traffic this is the recommendation for the video traffic delay uh, 200 to 400 milliseconds jitter 30 to 50 millisecond packet loss 0 0.1 to 1 percent and the bandwidth requirement is also there for an interactive video 384 kbps to 20 plus mbps so if you are having like interactive video then this is the requirement for the like interactive video sessions uh, in your network for the smooth operations of the video packets uh, the delay must not be like more than 200 400 milliseconds the jitter must not be more than 30 50 milliseconds packet loss must not be more than this much amount of number and the bandwidth should be there available bandwidth should be available for your video traffic up to like 384 kbps to 200 to 20 plus mbps so this is the recommended settings that you should have in your network for video traffic this is the recommended settings that you have for the audio or voice over ip traffic voice payloads if you compare so we can we can implement tools we can implement several quality of service tools on both routers and switcher switches so that we can improve the network performance and will be able to achieve this much amount of delay jitter loss bandwidth delay jitter loss so that our audio and video traffic so that our uh, interactive voice and video traffic can be sent properly over the network variety of tools are available we'll talk about that so this is the uh, this is the problems that you are going to face if you have not implemented any quality of service uh, for voice traffic for the video traffic or even for the business critical application traffic this is the requirement for the this is the requirement for voice traffic this is the requirement for the video traffic and the, uh, for interactive voice and video this is the network characteristics that you should have like delay jitter loss bandwidth these ones you should have so if you are having more than that much amount of delay jitter loss or less bandwidth then you should implement some quality of service so that the uh, overall delay jitter loss can be improved and certain amount of bandwidth can be resolved so that our users do not face any problem in making voip or video over ip calls or even for the business critical application traffic we must implement some quality of service we must reserve some maybe like uh, bandwidth certain amount of bandwidth for those business critical applications so that though that traffic can be sent properly as well so for all the type of traffic we can implement the quality of service for voice video and for the data traffic as well completely up to you for what you are going to implement this quality of service in the network now when it comes to voice over ip or video over ip packet these packets are typically generated from an ip phone so IP phone has the capability to uh, transfer the voice call, voice traffic or the video traffic as a data traffic from one device to other device over the network. That's why we call it voice over IP network or video over IP network. So your voice traffic, your video traffic is encapsulated with IP and it is sent towards the other device. So IP phones have the capability to uh, take that voice that you have made one end of the phone and encapsulate it on the uh, with the help of the IP or UDP protocol and then transfer it over the IP network towards the other side. 
now these are like some general like you know general uh, recommendations actually these are general recommendation if you have this much amount of like bandwidth delay loss and all these things then uh, you might even if you don't implement the quality of service it will be okay but again like you should always uh, prefer like certain business applications certain you know voice over ip video or traffic so you should implement the quality of service but even if we have meeting like all these characteristics then uh, even if you don't implement the quality of service then things are going to run even in that case properly as well but again chances arise that uh, maybe certain user has started downloading some file uploading some file using the ftp or tftp tool and your other applications are facing now the problems so you must control like for example for the ftp and tftp the max amount of bandwidth that is result is like only 5 mbps so no matter what happens ftp traffic or tftp traffic cannot go cannot access more than that much amount of bandwidth so those kind of restrictions you might impose but other than that if you have sufficient amount of bandwidth then even if you don't implement it it's going to be okay so how the ip phone actually works how this uh, ip phone actually is going to work the ip phone within the ip phone inside the ip phone there is a chip called codec so within the ip phone there is a chip called codec this chip codec is going to it, it basically takes the voice that you have made at one end on the telephone it is going to convert these voice bits uh, it is going to take those sound waves that you have basically made this chip codec is going to more like translate those sound waves into the voice bytes uh, 10101010 and then it is going to encapsulate it with a protocol called rtp then it is going to send it to the transport layer with, where it will be encapsulated with the udp then it will be sent to the ip network layer where it will be encapsulated with the ip so basically this chip that we have here called codec it it, it takes our voice bytes it takes our voice uh, uh, traffic it takes our like sound waves that we have made at one end of the phone it is going to convert that those sound waves into a voice bytes and it is going to place it inside the ip packet so ip phones like for example voip defines the means to take the sound that we have made at one end of the telephone and send it inside the ip packet over the ip network playing the same sound back on the other side of the telephone so here we have for example an ip phone it is connected via some certain switch then there is a router 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 then here we have another switch and here we have one more ip phone so here at this end uh, the user uh, uh, picks up the receiver and he starts talking so whatever sound he makes at one end of the phone the this this chip called codec is going to take that uh, sound wave it is going to take out those sound waves it is going to convert those sound waves into the voice bytes then it is going to encapsulate it with some extra information and then transfer it over the ip network all the way passing through these routers and switches towards the other end and at the other end these voice bytes are going to be converted into the sound waves and uh, on the speaker those uh, sound waves are going to be played for the receiver so voice packets are transferred over the ip network after being encapsulated with the ip and udp protocol it is the responsibility of this chip called codec so a phone user makes a call and begins speaking a chip a chip processes the sound to create a binary code so the chip which is what we refer to as the codec is going to take out those sound waves it is going to digitize it is going to process those sound waves it is going to process that sound that you have made at one end of the phone it is going to convert it into the binary code which is what we are going to refer to as the sound bytes and then it is going to encapsulate it with some protocol such as rtp udp ip and then the packet is going to be placed on the physical wire connected on the phone uh, that physical wire is going to take you towards the switch from switch to the router from the router to the router and the packet will be received on the other end so based on what codec we are using such as for example if we are using this g.711 codec it is going to be total 160 bytes in total and for how much time period like in 20 in 20 milliseconds within the 20 milliseconds it is going to uh, capture all the like sound waves that you have made it is going to convert into the voice bytes and it is going to place it into the ip header and transfer it towards the neighboring device so whenever the user picks up the receiver 
uh, makes the phone call and begins speaking. A chip processes the sound to create a binary code for a certain period of time. So for a certain time period, such as for 20 millisecond, the device, the codec is going to create these voice bytes and then it is going to encapsulate it with the RTP, with UDP and IP and then transfer it to the other side. The phone then places the data into the IP packet and that IP packet gets transferred all the way to the destination IP phone. So the devices are going to forward the packet based on this IP header. Uh, the, when the traffic is received on the other end of the like uh, network, when the traffic is received on the destination side, then the process is going to be reversed from this voice bytes. The codec is going to create the sound waves and those sound waves are going to be played onto the receiver side. This is the process that happens within the IP phone. This is a process that happens like within the IP phone. Did, uh, uh, new type of scenario, we can use the teams and all that Skype and all that, then there will be a difference in no, same thing like so we are using microphones we are using like same like audio jack video jack we are using like same processing and everything is happening on the your laptop your desktop in the same and code is in our laptop. Oh, obviously there will be something like there will be some a mechanism maybe the codec chip is on your microphone maybe some some something is there in your in your laptop desktop mobile devices that is going to take your sound waves and it is going to convert it into the voice byte and then place it place those sound bytes into the ip packet Nowadays, we also have the soft, software based IP phones as well. Those software based IP phones can be installed directly on the laptop, and from the laptop, you can make the calls. So, that is also possible. So, yeah, whatever, whatever, whatever process is required, whatever hardware is required must be available onto your device. Otherwise, you will not be able to make any audio or video calls. So, if your hardware that you are using lacks any such feature, any such, uh, such as, for example, codec then it will not be possible for you to make any audio or video call. So whatever device allows you to send and receive the traffic, voice traffic, video traffic from one point to other point, there has to be some certain type of chip, certain type of hardware that allow that is allowing you to do so. Details of these things can be found in your voice and video classes. So for details, you can uh, go for collaboration. We don't need to worry like how the IP phone works and all those things. A dedicated hardware will be there, yes, for audio and video both. This is the requirement of your network for interactive voice and interactive video traffic. So somehow you have to make your network have this much amount of delay or less, this much amount of jitter or less, this much amount of packet loss or less, this much amount of bandwidth from this to this much amount of bandwidth so that our video traffic can be sent from one end to other end. We can use variety of tools. We can implement variety of tools to achieve these characteristics so that our audio and video call or maybe our business critical application traffic can be sent properly. Those tools that we have, uh, there are different, different tools. We'll talk about them. So those tools are covered under the quality of service. So we can implement quality of service so that we achieve these characteristics of the network so that our audio call, video call or our data traffic can be sent properly from one device to the other device. Being preferred like the device, the traffic, audio video traffic is being preferred over the other type of traffic maybe. So quality of service tools define like uh, certain commands, quality of service tools define certain uh, best practices that we can implement in our network to improve the user performance. There are three models to implement quality of service in our network. One is referred to as the best effort service, which is by default, where we do not implement any quality of service in the network. Every traffic is going to be treated as it is equally. Every traffic is going to be treated equally, like no uh, quality of service at all. So if we have not implemented any quality of service, that is what we are going to refer to as the best effort service. Best effort service basically means like all the traffic is being treated exactly in the same way. Like audio traffic, video traffic, they do not have any priority over a normal data traffic. Just like the normal data traffic is being treated in the similar way, your audio and video traffic is being treated. So if you want to implement the quality of service, you have three models. One is best effort. Best effort basically means we have not implemented quality of service. It means that every traffic is going to be treated equally. 
then we have this thing called a diff servo model or sorry integrated service model inter servo model this is what we refer to as the inter servo model or integrated service model in the inter servo model what we do end to end end to end we can reserve services such as for example bandwidth with the help of a protocol rspp resource reservation protocol so in the inter servo model of the quality of service we can actually reserve a certain amount of resources end to end for our traffic there we use a protocol called rsvp to achieve the same so in in the inter servo model it inter servo model is it is an absolute reservation of the services using a protocol called rsvp inter servo model allows us to reserve certain services such as for example bandwidth end to end for a certain application the protocol that will be used for this purpose is referred to as the rspp and what we use in a modern day network is what we refer to as the diff server model diff server model or differentiated services model diff server model or differentiated service model this diff server model or differentiated service model is designed for modern day network here what we do it is per hop behavior phb differentiated service model actually allows us to implement quality of service on per hop basis per hop basis specifically means like on this router i can implement some quality of service then on this router i can implement some quality of service on these routers these switches for example on per hop basis i can implement some certain quality of service in our network diff server model follows this phb per hop behavior concept where we can implement the quality of service on per hop basis per hop basically means like on each and every router we can implement some quality of service it's not like end to end reservation of the bandwidth on per hop basis as per our requirement we can implement certain quality of service we can define things such as for example priority we can define things such as for example priority for the traffic on per hop basis on this router maybe that priority for voice and video traffic is more but the same for same voice and video traffic the priority is going to be lower onto this particular router it is possible to define the priority on per hop basis in this diff servo model 64 level of priorities can be defined actually 64 level of classification 64 level of prioritizations can be done in this diff servo model nowadays diff servo model in the diff differentiated service model or uh, in this diff servo model we can have like 64 level of classification what do we mean by this 64 level of classification it means like we can define like 64 different priority levels for our traffic and uh, this priority can be configured on per hop basis like on every hop we can configure certain priority for our traffic and how this priority is going to be set this priority is going to be set by changing certain fields in the ip header in the ip header we have a field called dscp and ecm in our ip header we have a field called dscp and ecm dscp differentiated service code point differentiated service code point dscp dscp priority in our ip header we have a field called dscp that we can change as per our requirement to define the priority for the particular packet dscp stands for differentiated service code point it is a field in the ip header which is used to define the priority level for the packet 6 bits in total so 2 raised to the power 6 is equal to 64 that means total 64 different priorities can be set in this diff servo model and then we have 2 bits for ecm explicit congestion notification so total 8 bits if we want like total 8 bits for 
quality of service in IP header. In IP header, we have total eight bits for quality of service. Out of those eight bits, we have six bits referred to as the TSCP and the two bits referred to as the explicit congestion notification. ECN is there to notify the devices about the congestion so that they can slow down the rate at which they are sending the traffic. So DSCP and ECN, we have like total eight bits in total that defines like this uh, diff server or differentiated service code points. Remember that we did not have this DSCP uh, since the beginning. Uh, this DSCP, ECN, these things came actually later on. Before we were using this DSCP, ECN, these concepts, earlier we used to have this thing called precedence, IP precedence. Before this DSCP came into the market, before these eight bits were repurposed, before this type of service bits, before this task type of service bits in IP header, before they got repurposed, redesigned, earlier we used to have this thing called IP precedence. Before this DSCP ECN came into the market, before we had this thing called IP precedence, where we only had three bits to define the priority for the packet. Using three bits, we had total eight priority levels. In IP header, we have a field called TOS. TOS stands for type of service. It is an eight byte field. Oh, sorry, it is an eight bits field. So TOS byte, TOS byte basically means like in the IP header, we have a field for type field called type of service, which is there to define the quality of service of the packet on the packet. Earlier, before this DSCP came into the market, earlier we had IPP, IP precedence, IPP. Earlier we had IP precedence field in the IP header, which uses three bits to define eight priority levels for the packet. But then, and five bits were being completely unused earlier. They later on, they, when they did some modification in the IP header, when the IP uh, header got changed, actually, when the IP header got modified, updated, then they repurposed these eight bits, eight type of service bits. They repurposed it. And what they did actually, they uh, configured these six bits for DSCP for priority and these two bits for congestion notification. So earlier we had the precedence, now we had the DSCP, now we have the DSCP and both are compatible to each other. If some packet has been marked with some IP precedence value and some packet has been marked with the DSCP, like it's okay, both are compatible. Compatibility has been maintained when the change happened from the precedence to the DSCP. In precedence, IP precedence, we used to get only eight priority levels. In the DSCP, we get a total 64 level for prioritization. In precedence, we did not have any mechanism to inform the sender and receiver about the congestion. But in case of uh, a DSCP, ECM, we have in the modern day, in the DIFSER model, we have like a field called ECM, explicit congestion notification that is responsible to tell the sender and receiver about a possible congestion in the network so that they can slow down the rate at which they are sending and receiving so that the drops don't happen in the network. Okay. Now, if you want to study in more detail about all these things, then you can always refer to this book, which is already uploaded onto the portal. So you can refer to this uh, IP telephony book that you have. If you want to study about these things in more detail, you can study this IP telephony book. Uh, th there used to be a dedicated uh, certification for quality of service earlier. So this is specifically for the voice traffic actually, voice like you know, voice and video things. So this book that they have, IP telephony self-study guide, quality of service. The, there used to be a dedicated certification exam for quality of service. So this book covers everything about the quality of service that you need to know. This is specifically for the voice 
video candidates we don't need to worry about like completing all the chapters so whatever is useful to you you can cover it from here this is already uploaded onto the portal so for example if you go to the quality of service overview they are going to tell you like what is quality of service like uh, uh, where should we implement the quality of service and all that you can you know uh, they are telling about like the what is quality of service and everything so you can uh, refer to these things the ability of the network to provide better special services and all that so bandwidth delay jitter packet loss and then they have defined everything one by one like what is bandwidth what is delay what is jitter what is loss everything so if you don't tune bandwidth delay jitter or packet loss what problems you might face like for the voice traffic for the video traffic for the data traffic so now what is bandwidth they have defined the bandwidth bandwidth refers to the number of bits per second that can reasonably be reasonably uh, be expected onto the link to be successfully delivered so this is the this is the definition for the bandwidth in some cases bandwidth equals to the physical link speed or the clock rate of the interface in other cases bandwidth is smaller than the actual speed of the link there is a difference between the speed and the link bandwidth the speed is the actual capacity of the link to transfer the data and out of that speed how much bandwidth we have configured how much actually data can be transmitted at what rate that is what we define as the bandwidth so speed bandwidth what is like this uh, like bandwidth concept then they have defined like scroll down then they have defined like delay what is delay and they have defined like uh, one two three four five six seven eight types of delay serialization delay propagation delay queuing delay forwarding delay shipping delay network delay coded delay compression delay each and every delay they have configured they have defined actually they have explained each and every type of delay serialization delay propagation delay uh, network delay queuing delay coded delay different different types of delays they have explained so total eight types of delay total eight and like nine types of delay are there so uh, then they have explained like uh, uh, how what are what quality of service tools can affect the delay settings so there is a tool called queuing there is a tool called lfi link fragmentation and interleaving there is a tool called compression there is a tool called traffic shaping these are the tools that affect the delay settings of your network then jitter means variation in delay so whatever tool affect the delay same tools actually affect the jitter because delay is in fact jitter. like jitter is in another way it is actually delay so whatever tools affect the delay characteristic same tools actually affect the jitter characteristic then packet loss and all those things so they have explained like in very detail if you want to study uh, voice basics like how the voice calls are placed and all remember that this book is from 2004 actually this book is from 2004 approximately so this might include serial links this might include certain technologies that you might not be familiar with such as for example atm such as for example like uh, frame relay so go through it if you want like as per your requirement you can go through this chapter to study about like uh, uh, different different uh, characteristic of the network in very detail like what is bandwidth what is delay what is jitter what is loss uh, to study about all those things in detail if you want you can go through this book so in short like if you do not use quality of service this is the problem that you will face for the voice traffic this is the problem that you will face for the video traffic and this is the problem that you will face for your data traffic. now there are total four characteristics that quality of service tools are going to affect first characteristic is bandwidth then delay then jitter and then the packet loss these are the four characteristics that your quality of service tools are going to affect on your network when it comes to like uh, quality of service tools and architecture so how can we implement the quality of service there are certain uh, for example uh, methods there are certain models to implement quality of service the first model that we can go for is the best effort where we have we don't have implemented we have not implemented any quality of service second one is int server model where we reserve resources where we app when we when we do the absolute reservation of the resources uh, end to end with the help of a protocol called rsvp that uh, model of quality of service is referred to as the int server model and then we have the diff server model where on per hop basis we uh, implement the quality of service in our network 
for the diff serve we have a field called toss type of service in the ip header which is used to prioritize your traffic when it is being sent out of a certain interface any doubts anyone let me know now we are talking now we'll talk about tools like one by one now we are to talk about these tools that we have one by one that we can use to implement quality of service so classification marking tool condition management tool policing shaping tool condition avoidance tool these are the tools that we are going to talk about as a part of our content okay if you don't have any question so first tool that we have here in our quality of service that we can use to uh, implement quality of service first tool in our quality of service is called classification and marking tool before we implement the quality of service we must identify what for what traffic we are going to implement quality of service for which traffic we are going to implement the quality of service identification and classification so before that we have this thing called identification identification basically means like we need to uh, define for what traffic we are going to implement quality of service uh, if you are saying that we are going to implement the quality of service for voice traffic what is that voice traffic how are uh, we going to match it if you say that we are going to implement the quality of service for the video traffic then how are you going to match it if you are going to implement the quality of service for the business critical application traffic how are you going to match it so identification defines an identification defines uh, an act of matching our interesting traffic for which we are going to implement quality of service so for what traffic we are going to implement the quality of service that comes under identification once we have identified that this is the traffic for which i want to implement the quality of service i am going to uh, place this traffic in a class just like we have that uh, route map here we have this thing called class map once we have identified once we have identified our traffic of interest we are going to place all that traffic in a class we are going to basically put all the traffic in a class that class is defined with the configuration command called class map and this act of uh, placing the interesting traffic in the class is referred to as the classification classification basically means like we are matching our interesting traffic and we are placing it into a class there are different different classes in our router in our switches where we have placed our uh, ftp traffic a tftp traffic telnet traffic sss traffic voice video traffic and maybe some business critical application traffic we have created manually we have created with configuration command we have configured certain classes and in those classes we are putting the package as per our requirement so classification classification is an act of placing the interesting traffic into a class class is just a concept class is just a configuration commands that we actually implement uh, the class configuration basically means like we are going to configure certain things on here the so classification basically we are going to identify we are going to match our interesting traffic and we are going to place it into a class that is what we refer to as the classification how are we going to do that so to do that what we can do so classification is a tool quality of service classification is not a protocol it is a tool again it is certain commands that are available in our quality of service where we can where we can identify where we can identify the packets based on the content in the header and then place it into a certain class identification and classification identification and classification identification and classification like we are going to identify our interesting traffic and we are going to place it into a certain class so for example we are going to take let's say for example these four routers here 
and we are going to keep the topology simple so these are four routers here we just need to see the basics actually so we have four routers here we can implement quality of service in any of our existing topology but uh, let's create a new one so here we have let's say for example four routers here we have connections zero by zero something like that then here we have uh, one pc and here we have one server so this is going to be something like that and this is going to be something like that so this is our host machine and i'm going to change the symbol of this machine to be pc and this is going to be server and this is going to be so this is our host machine and here we have a server running different different services uh, telnet ssf ftp tftp maybe some voice traffic voice applications as well that i actually want to access from this host machine so zero by zero one by zero mm, okay so let us first configure the ip address routing and then we will configure the quality of service so any any ip 192.168.10 dot 10 20 then 12 23 34 whatever ip you want to configure completely up to you so i'm going to go on the router number one and let me quickly configure the ip address here so on router number one interface ip address 192.168.10.1 no sit down interface ip address 12.1.1.1 and no sit down router the igrp not a summary network call zero then router two router three router four basically everywhere actually i need to configure everywhere like router eigrp not a summary and network all zero so everywhere i need to configure certain routing protocol so i configured eigrp everywhere i have configured eigrp everywhere and then on the outer one i already configured the ip on router number two interface fa0 by 0 ip address i have configured no shutdown interface fa1 by 0 ip address 23 and no shutdown interface loop back if you want ip address we have configured on there let's go on router number 3 then interface fa1 by 0 23 no shutdown interface ip address 34 no shutdown loop back ip address and okay then on route number four finally interface fa 0 by 0 ip address 34 .1 and no shutdown then interface ip address 4.4.4.4 and interface ip address 192.168.20.1 so everywhere i have configured the ip address everywhere i have configured the routing protocol eigrp i will go on to the host machine no ip routing and ip default gateway 192.168.10.1 and interface fa0 by 0 192.168.10.1 and on server no ip routing ip default gateway 192.168.20.1 and 192.168.20.1 so 
So 192.168.10 subnet, 20 subnet, then 12, 23, 34. We have configured and we have configured routing everywhere. So everywhere we have configured like uh, EIGRP routing. EIGRP routing is configured everywhere. So if you want, you can go to the host machine and from there you can ping. So ping 192.168.20.100. Your ping should be successful if you configured everything properly. So ping is not working. Let's try to troubleshoot. What could be the reason? So first of all, everywhere show IP interface brief. Interface was down. So type interface brief. This interface was shut down. It is up, 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 up. Okay. This is down. So a few interfaces. I forgot to no shut. So such as this interface was no shut, uh, this interface was shut down and on the host machine, this interface was shut down. So I configured no shut command there. Let's try again. Let's ping again. Let's see if the ping is successful or not. Okay. So end to end reachability is there. Now you can do the capture here. You can do the capture here. You can do the capture, whatever, wherever you want. Right. I'm going to do one capture here. I'm going to do one capture here. And I'm going to do one capture here. So I have configured, I have basically performed packet capture onto these three wires. You will notice that no matter what type of, I'm going to go onto this server and let me on this server, let me enable things such as, for example, uh, line VTY 0, 4 transport input all login local so i have enabled here remote access onto this server then i'm going to say username password and uh, ip domain name cisco uh, crypto key generate rsa and uh, basically i'm enabling ssh as well so IPSSH version 2. So I enabled here onto this device. I have enabled Telnet. I have enabled SSH. So transport input all. That means all the inputs I'm going to allow on remote access. Login local means local username password will be used for the login. And domain name, then crypto key generate, RFA to enable the SSH services onto the router. So I have enabled like Telnet and SSH onto the router. IP HTTP server, IP HTTP authentication, either local or enable. So whatever enable password you have set will be used for the authentication or whatever local database you have configured will be used for the authentication. This is, this is how we can enable the HTTP services. IP HTTP secure server if you want to enable HTTP F services so i have enabled like http and https services as well so i configured telnet ssh then i configured http services as well uh, other services you can enable if you want like uh, you can enable other types of services as well if you want but no matter what type of service you enable let's say i send i i, I send this ping traffic it is successful if i do telnet 192.168.20.100 telnet is successful if i do let's say for example ssh hyphen l 192 cisco and 192.168.20.100 if i do ssh then ssh is also successful everything is working properly as expected so ping is working, Tra trace I can do, trace 192.168.20.100, trace is working as well, ping is working, trace is working, telnet, ssh uh, is working, apart from that like uh, uh, you can say, you can, you can use the command telnet 192.168.20.100 and slash 80 which means like you can open 
HTTP services, you can you are trying to hit onto that server port number 80 rather than hitting on the port number 23. So telnet 192.168.20.100 slash 80. This is going to uh, sorry. I think direct we need to enter 80. Uh, direct enter not slash direct 80. Slash is basically when you need to mention things such as for example source interface and everything. So 80. So you, you are on the host machine and you said like 192.168.20.100 and 80. If you enter uh, open, open basically means like some sort of HTTP access I actually got as well. Right and then I can break it. Control C, enter. Control C, control C, uh, control C, it will break. So basically like HTTP access I also got. Open basically means like port number 80 services were actually open. Same I can hit on 443 if you want to hit on port number 443. That will also basically different different types of services I am actually getting. Different different types of services I am accessing. And no matter what type of service, no matter if you did ping, trace, telnet, SSH, whatever, whatever you did doesn't matter. You can check in any of these capture, any capture you can open, such as for example, you can open this uh, this ping packet you open this ping packet the, in this ping packet you can see this is an icmp packet this is the ip header this is the data link layer header if you open this icmp packet there is no prioritization if you open this ip packet there is no prioritization right here you can see differentiated service field zero that means there is no prioritization for this ping packet there is no prioritization for this ping packet. The ping ICMP packet that you sent, there is no prioritization onto this particular packet. No matter if you capture the packet on here, no matter if you capture the packet on here, no matter if you capture the packet on here, this packet is not even prioritized. You can check the trace packet. What about the trace? We did the trace as well. So what about the trace? So trace uses UDP. So here, for example, these are the trace messages. So here you can observe no prioritization on the trace packets as well. Like every packet is being treated equally. However, you might notice that certain traffic actually gets prioritized by default, such as for example, these EIGRP messages are automatically prioritized. If you open this, these are automatically prioritized. Like we did not configure this. These are automatically, these are by default prioritized. On the level of zero to seven, these are prioritized at level six automatically by default. We did not configure these things. These EIGRP OSPF messages are automatically prioritized. On the scale of zero to seven, these are prioritized at six. That means like second highest priority automatically. In fact, in fact, if you do the capture, for example, this TCP, this three way handshake, Cincinnati, ACK, ACK this, this telnet, for example, this HTTP, for example, that we did, you can see this is also by default prioritized. You will notice that certain type of traffic is automatically prioritized. We did not configure anything for the priority, but certain traffic is already prioritized. You can see that for the HTTP, there's no prioritization being done. There's no priority for HTTP traffic. There's no priority for hypertext transfer protocol. There's no priority for HTTP traffic. You can open like you can see maybe 443 HTTPS. So when the three-way handshake happens, when since in act, act when the three-way handshake happens, you can open any of this packet and you can see that it is automatically being prioritized at six. But when we talk about like uh, uh, HTTP segment, where is that HTTP segment somewhere? If you see the HTTP segment, if you see, uh, okay, it is HTTPS actually, so might not show you because it is encrypted. But anyway, the point is that your, uh, uh, for example, like HTTP, HTTPS traffic is not going to be prioritized at all. Same goes for like telnet, SSH, all these things. Like if you did telnet, you did SSH, for example. So in the telnet, if you open these uh, encrypted packet, you can see this is automatically being prioritized. If you open this telnet packet, telnet data, you can see that it is automatically being prioritized. You will notice that certain traffic automatically gets prioritized and certain traffic does not get prioritized at all such as for example ping trace http these packets are these are things are not prioritized however like protocol such as ei grp telnet traffic is automatically being prioritized i did not configure any quality of service this is the default behavior 
this is the default behavior of the machine to uh, this is the default behavior of the network to prioritize certain application traffic as compared to the other application traffic such as for example eigrp is getting prioritized over any other traffic and of course it should do that because eigrp control plane protocol eigrp is responsible to form the neighborship routing and all those things so if the eigrp packets get lost in the transit your eigrp neighborship might be affected so of course like it should prioritize that type of so certain level of prioritization is done automatically like we did not configure anything extra it is being done automatically however if we want we can prioritize the traffic as per our requirement now we have three types of traffic here we have normal let's say for example our uh, data traffic here we have our let's say for example telnet uh, ssh traffic telnet and ssh traffic and then we have our http and HTTPS traffic. We have data traffic, we have talent SSH traffic, we have HTTP, HTTPS traffic, we can have other type of traffics as well. We can have voice uh, video traffic that is being sent via uh, RTP protocol. We have different, different, for example, like uh, data, different, different type of traffic in our application, in our network. In the data traffic also, we have normal data traffic and we have some uh, uh, business critical application traffic as well. We have different different types of traffic in our network. What we want to do, we want to give this router ability, we want to give this router ability, we want to give these routers ability to uh, differentiate between these different type of traffic first of all. I want these routers to be able to identify these different different types of traffic. We want these routers to identify these different different type of traffic and then put it in different different classes. So identification and classification. We want these routers to give the ability to identify these different different type of traffic and then classify into different different classes. This can be done. Uh, with the help of like uh, a tool that we have in our quality of service a tool that we have that we can use in our quality of service to uh, identify these different different types of traffic and classify into different different classes uh, we have certain tools to achieve the same and the most common tool most uh, uh, basic tool that we can use for this identification for matching for uh, uh, identifying our interesting traffic the very simple tool that we can use is referred to as the ACL we can configure the ACL in that ACL we can actually match our interesting traffic as per our requirement so whatever things ACL can match on each and everything can be referred can be used in our quality of service I can go on let's say for example router number one or maybe on router number two I can go on router number one I am going to configure an access list access list 101 permit I'm going to say telnet SSH permit TCP access list 101 permit TCP from where 192.168.10 to 192.168.20 and eq stands for equivalent to port number 22 and port number 23 an acl as simple as an acl can be used to match our interesting traffic this is what we refer to as the identification identification is an act of matching our interesting traffic with the help of some tool tool such as called uh, ACL tool as simple as access control list IP access list extended extended uh, web math uh, sequence number you can define or permit TCP 192.168.10 to 192.168.20 
एंड पोर्ट नंबर एटी एंड पोर्ट नंबर फोर फोर थ्री इक्यू एटी एंड इक्यू फोर फोर थ्री तो दिस एसीएल डेट आई हैव कंफिगर्ड इज गोइंग टू मैच अवर एचटीटीपी एंड एचटीटीपीएस ट्रैफिक so we have we can configure as simple as an acl whatever things now you should know you have to explore what things this acl can match on we can use a standard acl extended acl since in this standard acl we don't get a lot of criteria to match so uh, this is just going to be like simple like extended acl is going to be much more better because extended acls can match on a lot of criteria so we can configure a named acl we can configure a numbered acl whatever you want you can configure as simple as a named acl number acl and you can match on your interesting traffic if you don't want to match on this interesting traffic based on acl we can directly call the protocol as well directly there is an option there is a tool referred to as nbar and bar stands for network based application recognition and bar is a tool that gives us the capability to match directly on the maybe name match telnet match ssh match http match ftp and bar can recognize different different applications running in the network and can match on those applications as well and bar version 2 has the capability to match on a lot of applications things such as for example deep packet inspection dpi is possible because of this n bar engine that is running on to the device which has the capability which gives the device capability to recognize the application traffic and then perform whatever configurations that you have done and bar is stands for network based application recognition this and bar allows you to match on certain application and uh, then maybe reserve some bandwidth do, do whatever you want then after in and bar it is also possible that we can match on the criteria that your acl cannot match such as for example we can match the url in the url a particular string like those kind of things we can match in nbar nbar gives the capability on to the device that it can look beyond the layer 3 layer 4 header it can look at the layer 7 in the http within the http header it can look up the url in the url it can look up the particular keyword and then maybe block or accept the request it is means like it is that that powerful so we can use a basic tool such as acl or we can use a complex tool such as for example nbar to perform identification to identify our interesting traffic for quality of service so for identification for identification we can use either acl or we can use nbar uh, you need to enable the nbar and to enable the nbar what i'm going to do i'm going to go on the interface and ip nbar protocol discovery is the command that i need to implement this command is going to actually if, even if you don't enable it then also we can directly we could have enabled it but uh, this is on this is how on uh, per interface basis i can enable this thing called nbar network based application recognition it takes some time it will take some time so you can use the command such as for example go to router 2 meanwhile show ip n bar and you can you can you can check like show ip n bar protocol discovery and all that show ip n bar you can you can you can use the command show ip uh, n bar command to validate uh, things regarding the n bar is is like show ip n bar and then you can use command such as for example protocol discovery something like that so you can confirm at the moment you can confirm that here nothing is there because on router 2 we did not enable anything so router 2 at the moment cannot uh, 
identify the protocol based on the name or anything uh, because nbar is not enabled actually onto this particular device what nbar version is currently supported onto this device the nbar version and all those things like about the protocol we can get the information uh, by the command swap nbar protocol or version command swap nbar version it will show you like what version of the nbar is currently supported onto the device nbar software version is 13 show ip nbar show ip nbar uh, statistics we can use to see how many number of messages has been sent received and all that show ip nbar like these are the commands these are some like show ip nbar and then you can do a question mark and we can see like what protocol for example like protocol discovery protocol we can use these commands to identify like uh, the nbar has been configured enabled for what protocols now on router number two we did not enable the nbar so we are not able to get any information but on router one we did enable the nbar and nbar has been enabled onto that interface i'm going to enable the nbar on the other interface as well ip nbar protocol discovery it will get enabled now immediately so on these two interfaces we have configured the nbar we have enabled the nbar now just just validate now just go on these and just validate just go on these this router and just use the command show ip nbar and protocol discovery see i did not uh, configure anything extra i just enabled the nbar onto this router and this router is now able to identify different application traffic show ip nbar protocol discovery command it is going to show you like all the uh, protocols that it can recognize that it has recognized uh, onto the device might take some time again because it is going to list all the protocols that it knows about so currently we have protocols such as for example eigrp running so you might be able to see some eigrp packets recognized by this nbar configuration right so show ip nbar protocol discovery command this command is going to show you like what protocols this nbar actually has automatically recognized automatically for example categorized again it might take some time because it is now going to list all the uh, protocols that it actually now knows about and that's it see now see on interface fa1 by 0 interface fa1 by 0 which is this interface on interface fa1 by 0 actually nbar is enabled on this interface packet count bytes count by input input means incoming traffic output means outgoing traffic so out of that interface 19 eigrp messages have been sent this much amount of data has been sent since the enabling since enabling the nbar onto that device so this is the protocol that it could recognize onto that particular interface and this is the protocol that it could recognize on the other interface EIGRP is the only protocol that is currently running. Now you do again, you go here, you do it again. You say here, you say ping 192.168.10.20.100. Ping is successful. You do the trace 192.168.20.100. Trace is successful. You do the telnet 192.168.10.100. Oh, sorry, 20.100. Telnet is successful. You do the FFH. So SSH will be successful as well. We are basically sending different different type of traffic. Like we can also send like HTTP, HTTPS, whatever, like different different type of traffic I am generating and sending. Again, again, wh what I did, I enabled the NBAR and then I am sending different different type of traffic. I'm also going to like here, what I'm going to do here, I'm also going to like say copy running configuration into the TFTP server. Where is the TFTP server? 192.168.20.100. Basically, I'm purposefully generating the TFTP traffic as well. It doesn't matter if it gets successful or not. It doesn't matter. Basically, I'm, I'm generating the TFTP traffic. I can generate uh, FTP traffic as well. It will like we can generate different different type of traffic. 
once you are done generating different different type of traffic again execute the command again execute the command show ip n bar protocol discovery and now uh, it will show you about all these protocols that it knows about onto that particular interface everything every protocol that 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 has been received or sent all the traffic for these protocols that have been sent and received onto these interfaces will be able to you will be able to see identify on your see eigrp i'm not sure what is this skype uh, i think like uh, telnet or SS, uh, either http or http something it has considered as skype uh, but eigrp is there you can see telnet is there you can see the icmp is there you can see ping is there tftp is there i guess like http https is considered as this guy because we are not using actually http we are using telnet and then port number 80 or 443 vrt doesn't matter the point is that the n bar is able to recognize these different different types of protocol onto that interface and onto the other interface as well just one command we have configured on this these interfaces we have configured ip n bar protocol discovery we enabled the n bar on these interfaces so now all the traffic that passes from these interfaces input output the n bar protocol can n bar protocol will be able to identify those different different types of traffic and now we can use it we can use the n bar to classify our interesting traffic so here here for identification we have used like acl and we have used n bar once our traffic has been identified either using either of these two techniques either acl or n bar now we are going to place it into the class map so i will go on the router number one and i'm going to say configure terminal do show ip access list do show ip access list so i'm going to say here class map class map name is going to be uh, a remote access <coughs> remote access class map remote access enter match ac access group acl number 101 so whatever traffic matches in the acl 101 is now going to be placed in a class called remote access class map web match access group the name of the acl was web whatever it was this is how we can configure class maps. So once we have identified our traffic, either by using ACL, we can put the traffic into a class map. Class map, I can say class map, I can say uh, 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 real time, real time. And I can say match, directly I can say match protocol. Match protocol and bar recognizes these protocols onto this device and bar this is ios 15 device and bar can recognize this is ios 15.0 so and bar can recognize these applications match protocol youtube directly so match protocol in our case rtp because voice video traffic will be sent via the rtp protocol directly it gives us the capability n bar gives us the capability to match the protocol directly by its name see match protocol uh, i think uh, match url i think match http match protocol http and uh, in the http or http uh, url here Match protocol HTTP URL, and you can put like for example in the URL, uh, match this URL only. You can put the HTTP URL, whatever. You can say match HTTP and mine. Mine basically means like we can match a string into the within the protocol header itself. So, uh, no need to go through in that detail, but the point remains the same that N bar gives us the capability to match the protocol based on their name and other parameters as well. So, for example, for the real time traffic, we have uh, used this class map real time uh, and we use the n bar here. We use ACL here. We use ACL here. Maybe we have some business critical data as well, and those business critical applications can also be masked on 
a different class map. So class map like biz uh, critical, whatever name you want to define. And uh, here you can uh, match on like whatever. You can match on these things actually. You can match on these things. What we have matched on, we have matched on ACL and we have matched on protocol. We can match on the other. For example, if the packet length, if the packet length is 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 in between like 100 to like 200 match it we can match different different criterias we can match on different different criterias in our class map so maybe we can configure like match protocol and we can consider like any for example application as a business critical application such as uh, do we have like uh, mm, okay let's match it gmail so match protocol gmail that means anything that goes towards the gmail will be classified as our business critical application so point remains the same this is what we refer to as the classification classification is an act of uh, classifying our different different type of traffic and remember uh, everything else everything that you have matched on these class maps it's okay but everything else is by default going to match in a class called class default this is by default there this is by default there. Every traffic matches in this class default, by default. So you can you can verify it, like show class map, show class map, show class map, and you can verify in the show class map that we have configured this, 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 oh, sorry. We have configured this, this, uh, this, and this, but we did not configure this one. So this one is by default there. Class default is by default there. And by default, everything matches under this class default. So if you have, let's say, for example, classified, you have identified and classified these applications, these protocols as per your requirement, then it's okay. And everything else is going to be there under the class default. So now what will happen? Now the router will receive different, different type of traffic. It will use the ACL to match the traffic, place the packet into the class. It will use the N bar. To match the packets and place it into the class. Done. This is classification and mark ident identification and classification tool. Done. Identification and classification. Classification is required. Classification of the packet is required to differentiate different types of packets so that they can be treated as per the requirement, such as voice over voice and video packet must be prioritized over the data packet. We can use ACL. We can use as simple as ACL or we can use more complex tools such as, for example, NBAR. After the classification, packet might get placed into different queues for further processing or markdown for prioritization. So once the packet has been placed into the class, then here we can define what we have to do with that traffic. Do we need to drop it? Do we need to allow it? Do we need to reserve some bandwidth for that traffic? Do we need to prioritize that traffic? Whatever we want to do now we can do after configuring this class map so acl and class map acl using acl we are going to match our interesting traffic and then we are going to place it into the appropriate class we can also match our interesting traffic based on n bar and then we can place it into the appropriate class for the classification for the classification we can use as simple as ACL or we can use a complex tool such as, for example, Ember. ACL can match on different, different criteria. ACL can match on like source IP, destination IP, source port, destination port. Uh, but basically, you need to explore the ACL option and whatever ACL can match on, we can use it in the quality of service. We can match the package based on the ACL fields in the ACL and you can also match the NBAR network based application recognition can look beyond the ACL and can match the packet based on the criteria that ACL cannot match such as for example protocol name or the URL. So we, we can either use the ACL or we can use NBAR to perform uh, classification on the traffic. Once we have classified the traffic we are going to place it into a then we can uh, once we have classified the traffic 
then we can do things such as for example marking what is marking marking is an act of prioritizing the traffic basically setting the priority or maybe mark down mark it down basically means like uh, i'm going to uh, drop it maybe for example once we have classified our different type of traffic then we can now mark it for priority we can in fact we can also drop the packet if we want as per our configurations so classification and marking tools that are available in the quality of service refers to the process of identifying the packet based on the content in the header and then marking the packet by changing the fields into the header marking basically means prioritization we can prioritize we can set the priority for certain type of traffic as compared to the other type of traffic why the classification is required classification is required to differentiate different types of traffic so that they can be treated as per the requirement such as voice video traffic must be prioritized over the data traffic and for this classification we can use as simple as like acl or we can use a complex tool such as a network based application for recognition once the classification is done packet will be placed in a different queue for further processing or can be marked down for prioritization once we have placed the packet into these different different classes then as per our requirement then uh, as per our requirement we can actually uh, perform now prioritization on these different different type of traffic and to perform the prioritization on different different packet we need to configure acl is there class map is there the last thing that you need to configure is referred to as the policy map policy basically now we are going to configure configure terminal i'm going to say policy map whatever like policy whatever name xyz whatever class what class business critical what do you want to do with this so i created a policy map called policy xyz i matched the traffic and what do you want to do these are the things that we can do here these are the things that we can do such as i can reserve a 5 mbps bandwidth for this particular traffic such as for example i can i can perform things such as policing i can perform things such as shaping i can actually define the priority of this packet i can enable different queuing strategies as well anyway what we want to do we want to prioritize it so priority i can define level. basically we can define the priorities and everything basically different things we can do we'll talk about that later but the point is that once the traffic has been matched we can in the policy map we can define what do we want to do we, we see here set set and then precedence the priority from 0 to 7 0 to 7 means 8 priority levels are there define whatever priority you want to con configure so this business critical application will have the priority level 4 or maybe 5 then what then next class next class is is next class is uh, a web the web any packet that is in the web class will have the set precedence precedence means priority and on the scale of 0 to a 7 the priority is going to be a 3 or maybe 4 or maybe the same 5 whatever so priority may be for example 4 then what then the next class next class next class is next class actually is uh, um, real time this is a real time traffic and i'm going to set precedence set uh, precedence i'm going to set the precedence as uh, a 6 or maybe 7 or maybe 8 whatever 6 7 basically the higher number is the uh, better one huh. higher one is the better one then the class the last one that is our i guess remote access i can for the remote access i can set the priority maybe for example like three set precedence mean set precedence means priority let's say for example four or maybe 
directory and for the rest of the traffic nothing so class default class class default i did not set anything so it will be like as per the default whatever it was and that's it this is how we configure the show run pipe section policy this is how we can configure the policy now in the policy map this is this is called this is called marking this is called marking marking basically means prioritizing marking the packet with the priority level so business critical application will have the priority of 5 on the scale of 0 to 7 what what we have classified as the business application business critical application gmail traffic then the web traffic will have the precedence means priority of 4 http https real time priority number 6 rtp remote access priority number 3 and the default is going to remain as default so acl class map and then the policy map and now either apply this policy map onto this interface or apply the policy map onto this interface whatever i can go on the router number one and i can say on the router number one configure terminal interface fa0 by 0 service policy output and the policy name was policy xyz that means now every traffic that goes out of that interface will be prioritized as per this policy map so acp acl class map policy map and then apply the policy we can apply the policy on the inbound interface we can apply the policy on the outbound interface like incoming outgoing whatever like service policy input output whatever you want to and then we'll talk about prioritization later on yeah now we have applied policy on uh f0 by 0 uh, this is the outbound traffic means uh, mm. out to us to server yes traffic yes will we have applied it yes. but if the traffic is came from the host pc uh, that interface uh, fa one slash zero uh, uh, then it will be not prioritized of course like there is no there is no need there is no need for that in between host and pc we don't need to do any prioritization you if you wanted like you can you could have applied the service policy command onto this interface in the inbound direction so that whatever traffic goes out of any interface must be prioritized but since like we have only this i want to send there are multiple interfaces i want like when the traffic exits out of this interface only then this priority has to be set and now you can confirm now you can check either you can do the capture for example you can do the packet capture in the packet capture you can go on the host machine on the host pc on this host machine we can uh, i did not actually match the ping actually no? so if i let's say now for example i say telnet so, uh, uh, if i do the uh, http for example so now you notice that whatever packet enters here here now you can check whatever packet enters here this http traffic actually is not having any priority but whatever packet leaves from here like from this interface so whatever packet leaves from that interface i think like it should set some priority onto that no it's it's actually not uh, setting the priority of that http traffic it must set it actually ah here four because for the web traffic we have set the priority as four http https so you go on router number one for the web traffic the priority has been set to four so whatever traffic that exits out of this interface will be set with the priority value of four if the traffic belongs to that particular application so we can do the telnet we can do the ssh we can go to the host machine we can do like from the host machine we can do like telnet 192.168.20.100 we can do the ssh we can do telnet we can do ssh like we can we can we can again try sending some different different type of traffic we can generate different different type of traffic we can send these different type of traffic and we can see like uh, every time the packet enters here no marking is done when whatever packet goes out of this interface the packet will be marked with a certain priority level 
and based on that priority level the rest of the network is going to treat that packet so if you if you if you go on router number one and you execute the command show policy map on the interface that we have applied fa0 by 0 you can see show policy map that we have applied on the interface fa0 by 0 the policy map that we have applied onto that interface is this one and we can see this business critical application no packet has been masked for the web seven packet and seven packets got marked with the precedence value of four for the real time no packets have come for the remote access actually uh, 52 packets have come and all those 52 packets have been marked with the priority level of three so we can generate different different types of traffic and we can confirm that our packets are being marked with a different priority level as per the configurations that we have done so we did not want it to apply to r3 and r4 uh, so it will be packet already classified ha ah, so we can we could, wherever you have access on if you have access on the outer one you can apply it on the outer one if you have access on router 2 and router 3 then you can apply it on router 2 and router 3 as well completely your choice we can apply quality of service anywhere in the network wherever you want i applied on router number 1 in outbound direction you could have applied it on router number 2 inbound direction outbound direction completely your choice we can apply anywhere where you want in fact the http traffic that has been set with the priority value of 4 i can remark it with some other priority value when the packet exits out of this particular interface that is what we refer to as the PHB for hop behavior. That on hop bar hop basis, we can prioritize our traffic as per our requirement. Yeah, so since since we did not configure anything here, whatever priority you have set, the priority will be set. Okay. If you set anything here, then it will be changed. So, if you go on this capture, the last capture that you did, you check on this, uh, the very last capture that you did, if you open this, for example, like telnet traffic or the HTTP traffic that you set, at the very end, you will have the value 4 here. Yeah. Yeah. So, from here, the priority is being set, will be retained, will be forwarded, like the devices will forward the packet with that priority all the way to the end. If you change anything here, then the priority and everything is going to change as per your configurations. But if you don't change it, whatever priority we have set, the same priority will be reserved or preserved end to end. Now, what is this precedence? What is this DSCP and all that? We'll discuss that tomorrow. But overall, these are the commands for classification and marking. Now we'll talk about marking techniques. How can we perform the marking? What are the methods available for marking? In general, we did the marking with the help of the precedence. We will talk about what is precedence, what is DSCP and all that. We'll, we'll, we'll be able to complete it by tomorrow. So, but the commands remain as it is, as what we have discussed.